Hello and welcome to the Project Falcon Punch guest list video. It's another special one today as we're going to be talking about our most disappointing games of 2019. You've heard our top fives, you've heard our games we're looking forward to in 2020. Now let's get real negative and talk about the games that we didn't find that great. At the end of the day, it's what we personally got ourselves hyped up for. So if there is a game here that you personally like, that's fine because at the end of the day, this isn't the bad games list. This is just games that we personally didn't enjoy nearly as much as we actually hoped for. And of course, by we, it's a whole guest list as always with everyone else returning from the 2020 list so that's scott alex andrew andy liam myself and jack but just like last time on the 2020 list we'll go straight in with my pick just because why not but before we do that please do let us know any disappointing games that you have from 2019 because there's actually quite a few there were definitely some great games in 2019 but there were also there were equally some games that let a lot of people down but anyway enough of that we'll go straight into my most disappointing game of 2019 so pass me take it away sure my biggest disappointment is a game that i was looking forward to for years really it was it's anthem ah uh, right anthem because god when, when th that that's a, that's another game where i'm like that came out last year yeah, did it? i know it's Fucking crazy hell. right that game had so much hype for so many years it came out and then just like a few weeks later like nobody gave a shit well that's the, yeah that's the thing like it, it was an unveiled in like e3 2017 and it was i remember when me and you i think it was like the microsoft's press conference and me and you were like this game looks really cool because you know bioware at the time yeah. were like they, okay well they had the b team make mass effect and andromeda okay whatever like that was clearly rushed but maybe they'll, they'll learn and they'll realize the mistakes of this i mean i'm a big destiny fan right and it was bioware aware that were tackling that style of game that like like live service ongoing game looter shooter sort of thing mm -hmm. but you're iron man at the same time you're flying around in, an, in a mech suit like iron man like i say i'm a big destiny fan so you put that plus with a good story that bioware always do bioware have, have infamously been great storytellers with mass effect and you know dragon age and all the other games that they've made it should have been amazing and yet <laughs> it was just so bland i don't know how you can make these ingredients of, of like say like the flying of Iron Man, the storytelling of Bioware, but the gameplay of like Destiny and put them all together yeah. and it just becomes this just meh. I, it was such a boring game. The combat was just dull. The uh, customization just was dull. <laughs> the hub area as well. Everything. That's, yeah. and I, I, and I, I'm sort of repeating it, myself here, but it yeah. really, It really does feel to me like it had some cool ideas yeah. and it felt like it needed a stronger direction. Yeah. It, it, it seems just very homogenized and not very interesting creatively well, conceptually it, the flying reason why it was dull is that like you fly around but you have like a, an overheating like sort of meter where you have to fly through water which okay that sounds kind of cool because you have to keep this your mech not overheating by going through waterfalls and stuff but all it means is you end up like just not wanting to fly everywhere you you are truncated <laughs> around this environment where the water is it just it's also limiting it just gets really boring after a while yeah um the hub area as well is separate to the main story hub area so the hub area where you've got other players or you've got the hub area which is the NPC characters completely separate one's in first person one's in third person and if you're playing through the game in co-op with friends like I did you'll go through this area and you'll then okay sat down these NPCs they're telling you like all this story you're like okay well, if, if someone starts that story at a different time one of you will be okay well I'll finish the story and I'm ready to start the mission and one of your friends like oh no I've, I'm not finished it yet I'm still listening and just sitting there like Zuff. I never really played it like the full game I've tried you don't you don't need to. I've tried a little bit of it and it was didn't really do anything for me. Hmm. They, uh, but yeah, I'm I'm kind of glad that that wasn't good uh, in a way <laughs> because that would mean another massive game I would have had to have played this year. If you, from what I saw of the game, I know they had some trouble development towards the end or even during as well from what's come out since it's been released. And they're supposed mm -hmm. to be trying to turn it around. If you told me that this wasn't going to be anywhere near my top 10, like I would have been like, really? This game looks genuinely yeah. really good. Well... Can't judge a book by its cover. Hmm. My biggest disappointment of the year, and I'm not sure if you can guess this, Dan, mm. but it's a game that I've been looking forward to for a long time, and it was Crackdown 3. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's another one, yet again, where I feel like that came out last year. Mm -hmm. Like, it feels like it just kind of came and went, and I, I think I played it over a weekend and then never touched it again. <laughs> Crackdown, like, I'm a huge fan of. I even like the second one, but the third one just hardly continues 
continues on from them at all. It, it's basically like a soft reboot. I don't know why they called it Crackdown 3. Mm-hmm. It doesn't build upon what the others, you know, laid down at all. It just sort of wipes the slate clean. The story is just nonsense. Like, conceptually, it doesn't make any sense. Towards the start of the game, your main character, like, gets killed in a helicopter mm. and respawns and has sort of Metroid-style lost all of their abilities and have to regain them. But a, a core part of the concept in Crackdown is that your character can be replicated again and again and doesn't lose it, its experience. And it's like, that's like a writing oversight that someone should have caught in the first meeting. <laughs> like, that's the whole point of Crackdown is that you, the main character can be regenerated again and again without, you know, losing any abilities. Mm. It's just, like, amateurish storytelling. It was just a sort of mediocre open world game that didn't do anything new. It was a sort of shit remake of the first one. And here's the thing. I don't hate it. Yeah. I had some fun. You and I played it together. Mm-hmm. But it was disappointing because it could have been so much more. Mm. And and a next-gen crackdown game, you know, it, the fans deserve better. It deserved better. And it's a damn shame. Do you remember when it was first, like, talked about and shown off and it was like, look at all this, like, the cloud tech with the buildings coming crumbling <laughs> down. Like, none of that was in the game. Yeah, yeah. People said that for years. That wouldn't be in the game. And mm. Microsoft pushed back every time. I'll be in the game. But it is in this sort of, like, walled-off multiplayer <laughs> that's <laughs> the not very good. Like, who cares? Crackdown is a single-player game. Nobody wants to play... Aside from co-op, nobody wants to play competitive Crackdown because it doesn't work. You know, it's, it's a lock-on shooter. It, no. <laughs> It's like when they try to make, like, the Metroid Prime 2 multiplayer. Oh, yeah. Like, although that was... Fun? More fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that that was more amusing than Crackdown 3's. But there you go. Like, I'd been looking forward to it for so many years, and I loved Crackdown. But it's disappointing because it doesn't pick up the gauntlet, it doesn't continue on, it doesn't build upon what was already there. And this was in development for, like, five years. Yeah, that's the thing, right? We waited for it for so long, and it's just sort of an anticlimactic far the hope for so long only for it to be just this very bland open world game that feels like it was 10 years old why did it take that long i don't understand mm. because in in the end it is just a bit bland isn't it it's mm-hmm. it's there's nothing about it where you look at it and go oh okay that's why it took so long not at all it just it feels almost like it was restarted halfway through to do something more safe what you just said in that last sentence could describe anthem as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get what like, you why mean. Why did it take this long? And it, it felt like it was rebooted halfway through, and also it's just boring. All right, so my most disappointing game of this year. I mean, there was a couple of games, but the one that stands out is Crackdown 3. Yeah. I absolutely hated this game. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because you can say otherwise, but I never like played the original games back in the day. But I do think that this game is definitely a game of its time. Like it feels like a 360 game, like an early 360 game. Um, I suppose so. Yeah, it does feel like it should have been launched last gen rather than this gen. Yeah, and it does feel like it's been rushed and they ran out of ideas and just decided to throw something together and be like, let's just put it out there. Yeah, because the first one was a great game. Mm-hmm. The second one was a good game. You like the second one? I know some people don't like the second because of the yeah, zombies. Yeah, I mean, the second one was good fun. I mean, I never actually, I never finished that one. <laughs> I finished the first one, but no, um, I just kind of played it and I was bored. It just didn't keep me entertained. Like, even with playing with, like, as I said, I played with you and our friend Ryan, and it was just, even that couldn't keep me entertained in playing it. It just felt really shit and just rushed, and that they literally just didn't know what they were doing. The, the game world has nothing interesting going on, like the actual no. world itself. Like, you think of games nowadays, like, there's a lot of, like, when you go around the world and you explore it, there's, like, loads of cool little things you can find and discover and, like, talk to NPCs or just, the, the world feels alive. This just yeah. feels like a, bo- a sandbox without any of the sand. <laughs> yeah, and they kind of try to break up, I think, some of the world with... I don't want to call them biodomes, but you had, like, one that's kind of underground and kind of like a, for like a dig site area, and then it kind of had the city, but then it had another bit. But even then, it just... It didn't really do much to break it up, and I just felt just not even worth releasing. I think the worst thing about this game was it was in development hell for so long. It was clearly... It had massive troubles in development. Mm-hmm. But the biggest thing that annoys me about it is that when they were first showing this off, it was, like, all about the destruction. Do you remember, like, yes. all the stuff that can explode and all the stuff that can fall 
fall and apart. I swear, like, it's not even half of what that could even well, do. You can't even do that in the single player. It's only in the multiplayer that's that weird, like, weird Tron looking thing. Like, yeah. so it's not even textured properly. And it's like a weird multiplayer offshoot that you can only have this destruction. And the whole selling point of this game was it's cracked down, but you can destroy the and, city itself. And as well, I found like the AI in the previous games were annoying, but this one's even more annoying. I, was, yeah. like, I don't know how you can make it more annoying mm. to even fight enemies and bosses. And it's just, I was very disappointed. I feel like going a bit off subject, like Half Life 3 as a game has not come out. Maybe they're not releasing it because they don't know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. Maybe they should have done that with Crackdown 3 as well. Maybe they should make a sort of a, a mid quill and make it in VR or something. I don't know. Just do <laughs> something different that's not this game. <laughs> All right, Jack, what's your most disappointing game of 2019? Mario Kart Tour. That kind of shows you that, like, <laughs> this was a really good year, that my most disappointing game of this year was a mobile game. Yeah, sure. I, I'm going to be honest. I had high hopes for this because it was Mario Kart on your phone. That sounds amazing. And I still think it is amazing for that fact that it's Mario Kart on your phone. Like, I can just pull up my phone at work or something. Uh, I hope nobody at work with is watching this. <laughs> um, and just play Mario Kart quick. But you know what I'm going to say now. Now, the, hmm. the biggest thing that ruins it is the microtransactions, the loot crates, and, and it's done really poorly. It, it's definitely pay to win. Like, if you have the right character, you'll do really well on that stage and you'll get all the points. Whereas if you could come first and be like, and get untouched in a, in a race, and you'll get like, say, 6,000 points for that race. But because you didn't have like the right character with the right combo and stuff, like, you know, you need to get five stars, you need to have 10,000. It's like, well, I can't possibly do that with the characters I have. Like, I need to pay money to get those characters that you want me to use. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. And the pricing is kind of awful. It was like $40 for Diddy Kong at one point or something. Yeah, yeah I think I saw someone like post online saying like, you can pay $40 yeah, for Diddy Kong in this game, or you can pay like $30 for Mario Kart. I think it was the 3DS. Yeah, it does a lot of cool things. I really like the point system. Really hope they bring that back. Yeah, like the combo sort of thing. I like. I do like that. Yeah, kind of incentivizes you to kind of play more dangerously. Like, mm-hmm. you know, in a normal Mario Kart, you'd just be like coasting in first place and just have a banana peel behind you. Mm-hmm. But this kind of incentivizes you to kind of take more risks and... Take some wider turn-ins to get the coins and stuff like that. Yeah, the combo yeah, going. yeah. Um, and it's a really cool system. And there's a lot more stuff like that, but it's just the whole gotcha system just ruins it completely. And I've, I've stopped playing since. Yeah, I hear. I'm in the same boat as you, really. I enjoyed it for like the first First month or so I occasionally pick up every now and again but yeah yeah just kind yeah. of fell off so I'll start off by saying that I played very few games that I didn't like mm-hmm. but there was one in particular that is a game that I really did like it was a very good game it was one that uh, is going to appear at the top of many people's game of the year list but it left me disappointed and that's Resident Evil 2 I knew you were going to say that as you said that then <laughs> I was like oh he's going to say Resident Evil 2 isn't he and again it's a great game uh-huh. by all means but I feel like Capcom had this gold moment to take what was already one of the best games of all time in Resident Evil 2 Mm -hmm. and take it to that next level Mm -hmm. because it's a remake it's not a remaster it's a remake so remake it and they just never did it specifically I'm thinking about when you're out on the city streets Uh, so when the game opened up and you're in that little shop I thought that was going to be like telling of what was going to be changed that there's going to be all this new stuff in in the game and then you Mm -hmm. get into it most of it plays out almost identically uh, with a few changes yeah like if any they actually cut a lot of the city stuff didn't they yeah and they cut some of the the changing mechanics between the two scenarios so they were pretty much the same i thought the changes they made to the sewers made it worse it made it longer but it made it worse the sewer section is definitely the worst section in that game i'll be honest again i just feel like they had this moment to really build on Mm. an already great game especially since it's been how many years since the original came out it just never reached that next level and that was sad fair enough like you say great game but disappointing for yourself yep my most disappointing game of 2019 is Daywin X Machina. Oh, right. Do you know what? I completely forgot all about this game, and I've even played it as well. That's, that goes to show how like forgettable this game was. Exactly. This isn't the worst game I've played. I mean, I don't even think it would make a worst games of 2019 video or something, but yeah. this is disappointing games. And this was the game that started off E3 2018 for Nintendo. That literally kicked off the presentation. It was like, oh, this is a really cool mech game. 
game. Okay, I'm looking forward to this game. And then when it came out, no one really talked about it. It's kind of just dull in the way it plays. Like, like you say, it's fine. It's not, like, bad. But, like, it's just so dull in everything that it does. <sighs> yeah, I mean, the biggest issue I have with it is that it feels very repetitive in its structure. Yeah. Like, the whole game, it was just, like, mission, a bit of story. Mission, a bit of story. Even when you get to, like, rank D, rank C, rank B, it still felt the same. And I was thought, this is kind of dull. I was expecting so much out of Damon X Machina. Did you finish it in the end? I did over 10 hours, but I haven't fully finished it, to be honest. Like, I haven't got to the end of the story. That says a lot, because I know that you're the you're very much a completionist, and you don't ever leave games unfinished. Exactly. I don't like leaving games unfinished. Now, keep in mind, Astral Chain and Link's Awakening came out the exact same time period. You know, like, within the same month, we got those two games. Yeah. And I just thought, I'm not, I want to play Link's Awakening, because I was like, you know, it just looked more interesting <laughs> to me. Like, mm. another big issue is that I just don't think the story, it was very convoluted. I mean, I guess a few of the characters were, like, likeable, but it's just like, the story wasn't really... It was just the same mech gameplay, which, to be fair, the mech gameplay is quite fun, with a lot of customization options. Although, mm. another big issue I have is that, you know in Xenoblade X, when mm. it doesn't really tell you a lot about how the game works, or, you know, like, how, you know, a lot of the mechanics work? Well, in Damon X Machina, there's so much fun at me that it felt kind of overwhelming to even play in a way. Again, maybe over time you'll get into it just fine, but on the first time it just felt bad with so many options and you're just like, how does this even work? Without trying to sound, like, idiotic, I was expecting this to be, like, one of, like, my favourite games of this year, but it just did not live up to that hype. Mm. Nintendo hasn't mentioned much of it. Like I said, no one really talked about this game, like, yeah. much at all. Every time a new big Switch game came out in the eShop, like, say, Astral Chain, Link's Awakening, Luigi's Mansion 3, and so on, they're usually in the top 10 downloads. Mm. Damon X Machina, the first week, I only saw it at number 20. It didn't go any higher. Yeah, this is a lot, really, isn't it? Like, I don't think barely anyone bought the game, so... Mm. Yeah, uh, that's my most disappointing of this year. So my most disappointing game of 2019 is an odd one in that it's Ring Fit Adventure. Oh, that is an odd one, huh? But I'd like to clarify that my disappointment is more in myself than it is with the game. <laughs> okay. So I bought this game because I need to do more exercise and seeing that it was like an RPG but an exercise, I was like, oh, maybe this will be finally the thing that is fun and makes me do exercise. Right. And it is really fun and I played it twice so far. <laughs> I really need to get back to it and get in a routine of doing it. Mm. But I think it's not so much the fault of the game. Like, you can argue that it is, like, if it's not holding my attention, then it's failed to get me into gaming like I wanted it to. Mm. But I think it's more the way I play games is very much to get a new one, binge it, and then move on. Mm -hmm. And playing the same game a little bit every day in between of playing other stuff is a mode I'm not used to. Right. So, yeah, I started playing it, played it a couple of times, and then I think I got Death Stranding. <laughs> and then when I could have played Ring fit adventure I was like well I'm going to turn on the PS4 and play Death Stranding instead yeah <laughs> So it, it's fallen by the wayside, unfortunately. My hope for the new year is to force myself to play it some more. Mm. Because it is actually a good game. Like, it does actually do the whole gamifying of exercise quite well, I think. Yeah, I guess just in your mind, it's like you wish you'd played more of it, but you just couldn't. <laughs> yeah. Because other, other things are more interesting. Exactly. I kind of may, Maybe I wish it had been even better. <laughs> it's quite a hurdle to make me want to exercise, I think. I think right. that's the problem. <laughs> you just come to like realise that yourself. You're just like, I, I guess I just don't like exercise yeah i think that's the case uh, even despite nintendo's best efforts um <laughs> and damn it why can't they try harder yeah i've not actually played this game but it, i i got wii fit like a lot of people did when that came out and it was like yeah. a similar sort of thing where it was a cool novelty for like a couple of weeks and then i just kind of had this balance ball then sit under my bed for like the next 10 years right yeah the actual ring controller like is really quite interesting like as a mm controller like i like the fact that i just own it because it's so weird mm. not that you can really play anything else with it well i've not tried i'm sure someone is going to do a dark souls run with it yeah i i was just surprised at how expensive it was i just when i saw it uh, when it was first uh, revealed i thought oh well that probably be a, a 30 pound game with a sort of five pound like peripheral and it's like so it'd be like 35 it's like no it's like 50 60 quid and it's like oh well, right yeah and i kind of wonder how much of that is justified because you'd think that most of the tech is really in the joy cons Mm. and the ring is just you you put the joy cons in it so really all the technologies in the joy cons i would have thought so i don't know why it's so expensive it just seems like it's this generation's version of like the wii zapper sort of thing it's just like this plastic shell thing that's holding the thing that has the technology right in. exactly yeah okay well <laughs> fair enough <laughs>
That, that definitely was a surprise. I, I didn't expect that one. <laughs> I told you it would be. Yeah. 